All right, so in metals one, the the end all goal is to have you guys feel more comfortable working with metal, being able to shape it and, and uh, join it and, and so forth. Um, but one thing that's not to be neglected is how we put a finish on, on metal. Okay? So I went ahead, we're to put we're to put a finish on the top of these. This one here, I went ahead and cut out the parts out of some sheet stock, the same gauge material that we've been using for the box. I cut everything out and then I went ahead and just spot welded that onto the top there. And the patina that you see on this was just me with a propane torch bluing it, bluing the material, getting it to a, uh, a temperature that produced that blue uh, look on it. By the way, the blue is just a surface blue. So if I went back with a drill that had a wire brush, I could remove that bluing if I didn't like how it turned out. One thing you're always concerned about when you're heating material is warping though. I think that in our brazing assignment, you noticed that that plate stock that you had the female portion of the brazing assignment, when we heated that middle for that nut, when you were done, you noticed that it had a little bit of a bow to it that we had to correct in the metal vise. We don't want to overheat these boxes to the point that we are warping the material. Okay, we're taking it to a, to a patina, a, a, a bluing, and that's as far as we're going. If you overheat it, you're going to warp the material and the box is not going to close correctly. An alternative to doing this, and I, and I, I like this. I like the, 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 how it stands up like that. We cut that out with the tin snips the same way we did with the box to cut out the triangles for the corners there. The same thing. You want to be extremely careful though. In this case, uh, it's advisable to wear a pair of gloves in the hand other than the hand that's using the snips so that when you're holding it and the sharp edges don't, don't hurt you with. And then we go back and we just clean up the edges of these, of these letters with some sandpaper or on the belt sander. An alternative to putting a raised letter on here is to spray paint a, a pattern on this. So in the case of this one here, I used this pattern to go ahead and do that. I have a lot of tape over the front there and the tape is because I created windows that would help to attach this template to the box. Okay, and I keep the whole sheet. A lot of students will cut this out here, but the whole sheet stays on there as a way of preventing overspray from getting onto my box. So to demonstrate here today, I went ahead online, uh, not online, I went ahead and I went into a, a, some software for, for writing in, and I came up with a size lettering that's going to work well for putting onto this box right here. I have it centered on the page there, and I have the font to how I want it to be. I'm ready on this one, Elliot, who's one of my sons, and the box has to be for someone, so I decided to give it to him. So anyways, I screwed this all out because for this one here, I could put windows in between each one of these letters and put tape in there, but I'm actually going to tape the top and the bottom of the letters here as I do this, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. I drew the lines to give me reference later on. I'm going to start off by just cutting out, cutting out all the letters. And I'm only going to do a couple of these just to show you an example because you don't have to see the entire time that I'm cutting these out. But I'll cut out my E first. I never have my hand back behind the knife as I'm bringing it down. It's always past and I'm pulling away from my, from my hand. Very honestly. This tool right here scares me a lot more than some of the other tools that we have in the classroom here because it's often overlooked as, as being very mundane uh, and very safe, but it actually is potentially extremely dangerous. So my E is cut out. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm going to cut opening above the E, below the E, and anywhere that I have a straight line. I'm actually going to cut, so you see what I've done there? I'm going to cut a little bit out of the end of the E here as well.
So I have that line showing where the end of the E was supposed to be. I have those lines showing where the top and bottom of the E are supposed to be. Now, if I was going to tape this onto my box, it would sit like that. And I would need to get some tape. The tape has a straight edge, a factory edge, and it has a tape part that I tore. I'm not going to use the part that I tore, obviously. I'm going to use factory edge for this. So I'm going to put one of the factory edges up to the end of the E, right on that line that I said was the, was the edge of the E. Now I'll put another piece of tape along that line, which is the bottom of the E, and another one at the top of the E. And I'm using the factory edge of the tape across the straight edge for each time. So you notice now that that piece is held down tight onto that onto this onto this piece here. That allows my, me to not get any spray that's going to go underneath my letters. So, does it take a little bit of thought before you start cutting? Absolutely. You've got to think about how you're going to be laying out your tape that you're going to hold pieces down for this. This was one way of doing it. Okay, and it did pretty well. Not a lot of overspray there. There still is a lot of work for me to do though, if I'm gonna continue doing it this way, right? I still have to think of how I'm gonna cut out extras for all these, these pieces here. And I'm using the top and the bottom for all of them. And at some points, I'm gonna use the sides as well. Okay? Remember, this box is not ready for that. The first thing that we put on, first thing we do to a box is, well, for me, if I'm using material like this that's all rusted out, I'm gonna get a drill and a wire brush, I'm gonna clean the box. Then, because the manufacturers who give us the sheet metal put a small layer of oil over top of the box, I'm going to take some mineral spirits, which is in the fire cabinet in the side room. I'm gonna hold a piece of paper towel over top of it, tilt it so I can dampen the paper towel. And I'm gonna use the mineral spirits, which is an oil thinner. I'm gonna use that to wipe off the box and to remove any oil that's on top of this box. Uh, that way, I have a better surface to adhere to. The first paint that I'm going to use is a primer paint. So there's primer and there's enamel. And nowadays what we see so often when we go to the store is primer and paint in one. And that does a pretty good job, okay? But in terms of a professional job, we would always use a primer first. The primer has adhesives in it. So that means that the primer is going to stick and become a base for your other paint to attach to. So the primer gets a good, a, good, uh, a good contact with the material that you're painting, and then you go ahead and you put your enamel over top of that. So it doesn't matter what color primer you use because you'll be spray painting over top of that anyhow. Okay, gray, is the, this is the primer coat here. I actually put my enamel over top of that. But for the colors that we have, think about how you want it to be. What color do you want your stencil portion to be? In my case, what color would I want Elliot to be? And what do I want the background to be? So I have to prime it, I would have to paint the background, and then I would have to wait, because I would want that paint, my background paint, to be fully cured before I would go ahead and put tape on it, okay? So when you're done with your box, I want you to have your background color fully done, or, or fully sprayed, and then start thinking about your template, and how you're gonna have that put on. And that right there, if you have the primer and the background done, the time that it takes you to get your template done and get all the cutting out that you're going to be using for that will put you into the next period where you can go ahead and just spray your, spray your template and then that will be done for the period, okay? All right.